hello everyone. Like Emmanuel was saying, my name is Alif Chagé and I'm uh, affiliated to both INRIA, uh, the INRIA Research Center in Paris, uh, in France, and the University of Montreal in Canada. And indeed, I am currently a PhD candidate in digital humanities. So it's a great honor uh, to be here today, uh, invited to introduce the HDR United project. Um, I have titled this presentation, HDR United Commons for Automatic Text Recognition. So let me start with explaining what is behind this name. Um, it's actually going to be most of my presentation and then I'll, I will explain why I'm talking about commons. Um, so HDR United is actually several things. Uh, it's above all a catalog of metadata describing data sets of ground truth that people can use to train HDR models. Um, ideally, these data sets are open and free, but we are aware that there are some limitations sometimes with the uh, images, uh, for example. Um, it is also a schema for standardizing the descriptions of ground truth data sets uh, in such a way that would make them reusable by other people. And we also often define it as an ecosystem because we built several tools around the initial idea of a catalog. Um, I would also like to point that HDR, what HDR United is not. Um, it is not a software for HDR, uh, nor is it tied up to any specific uh, software. Uh, it is not a platform to store data sets uh, because we don't have any uh, storage capacity. Um, and it is not a funded project. I think it's uh, important to highlight it. Um, a bit of a backstory. Uh, in, in 2020, I was an engineer at INRIA and I was in touch with many people starting to use HDR technologies in France. And I kept having to be the, the bearer of bad news uh, because each person that contacted me had to start a project from scratch since there was at that time no collective platforms from which they could pull training data. And instead they would have to spend dozens of hours, uh, maybe hundreds of hours creating their own training data uh, by hand. So some of them had very similar documents, the same periods and same languages, for example, uh, and many didn't have any actual team of transcriber. So it made me realize that these people would save a great deal of time uh, if they were able to somehow uh, put their data together um, or to use the ground truth that someone else had already created during their own project. So for that, obviously, people need to be, uh, to, to be sharing their ground truth more systematically, um, but there also needed to be a way to easily find those data sets. So this is when Thibaut Cléris and I started the HDR United project. Um, we had in mind a series of imperatives, which we thought would make HDR United a useful tool for the community. Um, first, it had to be friendly to users and producers of data. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't put the effort in describing their data sets in a catalog and the project wouldn't work. Um, we wanted it to be a collaborative enterprise in which anyone from the community could decide to be involved because we didn't want to start dictating rules out of the blue. And it had to be as low tech as possible because we were doing this on our free time and we did not have any budget. Like I said earlier, we still don't. Um, we began by creating an organization on GitHub. So just a precision here, a GitHub organization is just a way to identify a group of repositories that form an ensemble um, or a group of users on GitHub. Uh, it doesn't have any legal implication. Uh, we like the idea of using GitHub because we were familiar with it, um, but also there were several other reasons. Um, we knew we mostly needed a website uh, for a project and that can be easily be uh, that can be easily hosted on GitHub. Um, it is a platform designed for people to jump in a project, contribute something in a discussion or in the code, or simply have access to the history of changes and conversation on the project. So GitHub has a culture of transparency and collaboration, which we wanted. And lastly, there are useful features in GitHub to automate actions, um, like browsing a series of files to generate a catalog, if you see where I'm going with this. Um, a user of HDR United would mainly interact with our website. Um, so even though there are many things to say about how we built uh, the whole thing, I am mostly going to focus on usage today. Um, if you want to know more about the setup, we did a presentation in June this year in English that covers more of it. Um, I put the reference on this slide and a link to the recording of the presentation. Uh, so when I share the slide, you can have access to it. Um, and of course, uh, you can also ask me to, uh, questions today on more technical aspects if you feel like I didn't cover this enough. Um, 
let me use some scenarios to explain how we use uh, HDR United. So the first scenario, um, you want to, to reuse the data uh, that someone else produced. So <clears throat> let's say you are a user of an HDR software, uh, like Escriptorium or Transcribus. You work on a series of French manuscripts from the 19th century, and for some reason, you haven't found a, an efficient model to transcribe your documents. If you start from scratch, you might need to transcribe, say, 100 pages by hand before you can train a, a model. So you might logically be interested in checking out which ground truth already exists. Um, if you want to use a data set described in the HDR United catalog, you will start with well browsing the catalog on the dedicated web page, uh, which is very simple. Um, you can use some filters um, to narrow down the selection of data set descriptions that correspond to, for example, handwritten French from the 19th century. You can click um, on a description card to be able to read the full description of the data set. Uh, it includes the context in which the, the data set was created, who made it, um, what kind of document is in it, how much data is, it contains, what kind of transcription rules were used, basically anything that the creator shared following our description standard. If you decide that a data set could be useful, then you can click on a link to go to the corresponding repository. It can be Zenodo, GitHub, Nakaba, Internet Archive, any storage solution that the creators of the data set decided to use. And then you download the data sets and you can now import it in your software. Because we like the idea of traceability and because the, a data set is a product of research, we generate citation examples from the metadata provided by the creators of the data sets. So you can cite them at the end of your project, and you can even capture the citation with a software like Zotero. Scenario number two, you want to offer your own uh, data. So let's say you are a user of an HDR software like Escriptorium or Transcribus, and you work on a series of French manuscripts from the 19th century. You have meticulously transcribed 100 pages by hand, following precise transcription rules, and you would like your hard work and ground truth to live on and contribute to future projects of others. The first thing you need to do is to publish it on a platform. So you can use Zenodo, GitHub, Nakaba, Internet Archive, and so on, whatever solution you can or want to use. We offer a template for organizing such a repository, which includes joining a license file, uh, as well as an equivalent to a readme file describing the contents of the repository. Then with the link to your repository in hand, uh, you can go to our record new data page uh, on our website and fill a form. The form corresponds to the current state of the HDR United description schema. It is meant to facilitate the generation of a, of a correctly formatted description that would be ready to be added in the catalog. Once you have filled the form, you click on a button called Get Formatted Metadata. It creates a formatted text which follows uh, the YAML format, and you can download it as a file um, or copy the content, and then you can submit it to us in the form of a ticket opened on our main repository. But honestly, at that point, you just need to click on the button for that uh, after generating the, formatted, generating the formatted description because we try to make it as simple as possible. Um, if you know how to use GitHub, you can also directly submit it in the form of a pull request. Currently, Thibault and I assume the roles of um, editors. Um, we control the correctness of the description. Um, we might suggest ways to improve the repository if it seems necessary. And when all the lights are green, ta-da, we add the description to our main repository. The submission of a new description um, or its acceptance uh, triggers several automated actions. First, when you submit your description, we automatically run a tool called Ashtruc, which in French sounds like that thing, um, which controls the validity of your file as far as the schema is concerned. Secondly, when the description is accepted, Ashtruc aggregates every description that was formally accepted into one single pivot file called hdr unitedeml it's our machine readable catalog. And the fact that we have this aggregation step uh, means that it is totally possible for, the, for someone to progressively build their data set of ground truth and to update the description as they make progress. Um, and lastly, the pivot YAML file is parsed by our website in order to generate the content of the catalog web page. So with one action, accepting a new transcription, we maintain everything up to date and minimize the risk of errors. 
we have other tools dedicated to controlling the validity of, a, of the XML files uh, storing your transcription. For example, if you want to make sure you didn't leave any empty lines, uh, you can use asterisks. Um, generating metrics, for example, to count how many lines, files, characters are in the data set. And these metrics are useful to have an idea of the density of your documents. Um, or controlling the list of characters in a data set, which you can also use to normalize your list of characters. Uh, for example, if you use two types of apostrophe by mistake and you want to make sure you only have one type of apostrophe in your grant tree. The catalog currently holds the description of 58 data sets. Uh, so it, uh, a little more of, of half of it is in French uh, because it takes time to reach a more international community of users. Um, however, we also have data sets covering languages like Arabic, Catalan, Spanish, English, Italian, Dutch, German, Portuguese, Hebrew, or Greek. Um, we cover a period spanning from the 9th century to nowadays, and put together, it represents uh, a little over 18,000 pairs of images and XML files. Uh, you can see on the graph the way this ground truth is distributed over time. Now, let me wrap this presentation going back to the initial title, Commons for Automatic Text Recognition. First, why automatic text recognition and not handwritten text recognition? Well, simply because we also allow people to share ground truth for printed and typed documents. Uh, even though we started with the idea of resources for handwritten documents, it is obvious that there is also a need to get uh, together uh, references for these data sets as well, especially for older prints. Uh, we could have called HDR United something like HDR Commons, the same way you have Wikimedia Commons, um, but I guess we were not bold enough. Um, yet our goal is really to create a culture of sharing resources in the context of automatic text recognition and in a way that is not limited to a given software. Uh, we rely on existing standards like XML Alto and XML Page, which are used by many HDR and or OCR softwares to store the transcriptions. Uh, and we created our own documented standard uh, with the hope to trigger conversations about how we can better describe ground truth data sets. Because if we as a community are able to explain better how we built our ground truth and what is in it, then we actually make it usable by someone else. Thank you for your attention and I'll be very happy to take any questions either right now at the end of the talks or later in the shared documents or by email and anyone who seen fit. Thank you again. Thank you very much, uh, Alex. Um, maybe while uh, our participants can uh, go to the document and, and put their questions in there, um, I had one question for you. Uh, when we were preparing this call, we tried to investigate uh, who is using Zenodo to share data sets. Uh, and uh, ground truth data sets. And uh, we found uh, that uh, the HCR community seems to be pretty active uh, on Zenodo. Um, do you know if there are any particular advantages to using uh, Zenodo in, in, the, in, in a complementary way to your platform? Or it, or it, yeah, doesn't, so it doesn't matter? So like, like I said earlier, uh, HCR United is not, um, a storage solution, so you you would need to have uh, to use Zenodo, for example. Um, the really convenient thing with Zenodo is that you get a DOI, which makes it very uh, easy to to cite your data afterwards. And in uh, HDR United, we have a specific field in the in the schema uh, to link to a DOI, uh, so that there is a, a clear link between the repository, uh, like a permanent link between the repository and the description. Um, I think people use Zenodo because it's just mm, accessible to anyone, mm. and uh, I guess some people started using Zenodo to store the HDR doc, uh, ground truth, so since it started to be there, then it's just you, more often there than anywhere else. It's definitely a good point. Uh, I see a question coming uh, in the document. Uh, it's a question from Maud. Maybe Maud, do you want to ask you, your question? I think we have we have plenty of time if you want. Yeah, many thanks. My question regards uh, you mentioned homemade and custom schema besides of page and um, and alto things. And <clears throat> my question is, if I understood well, can you please 
tell a bit more about this uh, homemade and homemade or, or custom schema. They were there for for answering which needs and and um, and what are they uh, concretely? Thank you. Thank you for the question. So mostly the 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 way we work is um, when someone fill out that form to describe the data sets, it generates a YAML file, and with uh, YAML you don't have any control, or, like you cannot you cannot apply a um, a schema to a YAML file. So we just created a, a schema in the form of a JSON file that we apply to the YAML file to control that we have the different fields that we expect. The way we build this schema is. Um, I mean, I can put a link in the chat to the schema. Let me just do this quickly. Um, the idea was mostly to um, to start thinking about which type of description we need uh, to make a data set usable. Um, because if we take uh, the, the current way any data set is described, uh, we would be missing information such as um, the transcription rules that people used, um, the number of hands you can find in a, um, in a, in a data set, like say uh, you have a mix of two hands and you also have a mix of printed and, and manuscript. This is something that as a user, as a potential user of a ground truth uh, data set, I, I want to know that to be able to exclude some data set that would not correspond to the diversity of hands I want or uh, the type of document I want. And so this is why we created this uh, schema, just to add those information that we think are necessary. Thank you. So, so this schema are more related to the data set description, to metadata and not to the transcription themselves. Yeah, yeah, it's only for the description uh, okay. of the data set. Thank you. Thank you. There are other questions incoming in the Google Doc. Maybe Mike, would you want to go forward with your question? Yeah, sure. Um, so I appreciate that uh, you had on there the, I think it was the PAGE or the Alto uh, um, schemas for the, for providing the, the image and the transcribed text. Um, but I know historically at the Smithsonian, we've, our transcription center has only captured like a large wall of text for each document. Um, and it, there's no corresponding bounding boxes to like which line uh, connects with which line of text. Um, is that useful um, or is there some sort of pipeline to like upgrade from, from one to the other? So uh, there are some HDR tools that are currently being developed to be able to capture the transcription at page level or uh, mostly paragraph level. Um, so maybe in the future, it will be possible to also have that level of um, segmentation. But at the moment, uh, I feel like for most the, most of the HDR tools that exist, you have to have this uh, line level segmentation. Um, one of the reasons why there are so many data sets in HDR in Edit is because within a project called Prema, we were able to found, uh, to found sorry, um, small contracts for students to align the transcription with the images. So we had uh, to, in order to find again this uh, uh, fine grain uh, segmentation, um, either it was doing transcription from scratch or when we could, we were just using transcription that already exists at image level or document level so that they wouldn't be using or losing time doing the transcription. Thanks, so I'll check if I have out. to answer your question, I guess, yes, it can be useful, but probably with a step uh, where you do the alignments either manually or uh, automatically, you have some tools being developed in order to be able to do the alignment automatically. Okay, great. Maybe we can take one last question. There was one from Claudia in the document. Uh, I don't know if Claudia wants to ask your questions. Yeah, I think so. I, I think uh, it, it's related to Maud's question. I think you partially answered it. I was just wondering about your thoughts. Uh, we, and designing the the form for the metadata, you know what? How did you go about this? You know, did you have some standards, or did you, you know? But you you partially, you know, I heard some of your answer. I don't know if you have anything to add to it. Um, 
I mean, obviously the idea is that uh, we felt like the current way data sets were described was not enough for the needs we have when you want to reuse ground truth specifically. So that's the part of my answer from uh, Jimod. Um, I think looking in the future, the idea is that it doesn't stay at the level we are, we are at the moment. And hopefully that can become a standard or something that's uh, taken on by maybe libraries to start having a real way of uh, systematically using that kind of uh, um, fields to document the, the ground truth. But this is still experimental. And this is why I was putting the link to the um, uh, repository on GitHub dedicated to the schema, because you could, even if you're not using the HDR in edit, you could jump in look at the schema and tell us like, oh, from my experience, I think you completely overlooked that other standard that's being created or um, like we're really open to discussion and trying to find ways to improve it.